Why go on the Mi'raj? For what reason someone asked the question? You're a prophet. Why do you need to go from Mecca to Jerusalem? From Jerusalem to the highest heavens. Yes, you're already a believer in God. What's the need for you to go on this journey? The question arises that this particular journey seemingly, in the opinion of many, took place after the end of the economic sanctions against the Muslims. We said... The economic sanctions began when? They began from the seventh year of the prophethood of the prophet, when he was 47, until which year? The tenth year, the year we call Am al the year of grief. Therefore, in those three years, it took its toll on the prophet, those three years, yes. Because these people who he had grown up with had all let him down, had all attacked him. He lost Abu Talib, he lost Sayyidah Khadija. These were the pillars of his life the backbones of his life. All of this coming together. And how many people had become Muslims in Mecca? Not many. Maybe a hundred had become Muslims at that point. You're trying for years to bring people towards God and only a hundred are interested in what you're doing. I remember many young speakers when they talk to me. They say to me, at the beginning of our career, our crowds aren't big. Yes. We only have 10, 15 people in our crowds. Yes. Or some of us, they will say, for example, to me, you know, in Muharram, I had only 95, 100 people. Look, I tried my hardest, but not many people come, only 90, 95. First thing I remember saying to them is, be patient. Your concentration shouldn't be on numbers, it should be on quality. But secondly, if Imam al Hussein could only get 72, if you're getting 75, you should be proud of yourself, yes. If you look at Ahlul Bayt السلام, they were getting what? Rasulullah was only getting a hundred people who were coming towards Islam. Quran tells him, Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Quran litashqa. Taha, don't, we didn't send this Quran for you to hurt yourself. He was hurt. Because you know when you want to guide someone to something and they're not listening? How much pain does it cause you? When you have one of your best friends and you tell him that, listen, ya Habibi, and so when you're looking at Rasulullah saying, I leave behind the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt, why don't you come towards Ahlul Bayt? What's your animosity to Ahlul Bayt? When you see people fighting Imam Ali, it doesn't give you the indication that after Rasulullah died, something went drastically wrong. It hurts you when you have a friend of yours who truly believes that after the Prophet dies, nothing went wrong. Everyone loved each other. There was no problem with one another. Yes. Even though the wife fights the son, no problem. Even though Muawiyah fights, no problem. Even though Hussein is butchered, no problem. It hurts you. Likewise, imagine Rasulullah has come with this message. A heavy burden. And people aren't listening. It was hurting him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore wanted to console him. Because all of us, whether we are the Prophet Muhammad, or oh, we're normal people like me and you, every once in a while we need a pat on the back. Do you agree? If you're doing work for the jama'ah, for example, you're doing work for the community. If all you hear from people is complaints, that's all you hear. Then there comes a point when you go to sleep in the night and you think to yourself, is anyone really happy with what I'm doing? The moment someone comes to you and says, well done, and that's why Rasulullah says one of the most spiritual acts in Islam is to say well done to someone and pat their back. Yes. In English literature, we talk of give him a pat on the back. Rasulullah has already said that. Because when you give someone a pat on the back, you're telling them that, listen, if no one else is supporting you, don't worry. I'm with you. Who better to have as a friend than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Who are you who is the rafiq to the one who has no rafiq? In dua, Joshan al-Kabir. Don't we say? Oh, you who is a friend to the one who has no friends? There are times when Imam Ali would say, the truth left me no friends. Yes. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib would say, truth left me no friends. It's true. Sometimes when you speak haq, people will not be your friends. They'll leave you. Rasulullah likewise. Mecca, people were throwing things at him. He went to Ta'if. And Ta'if is the same rubbish as it is today. You'll find that people were throwing things at him. Yes. He went to everywhere trying to bring people. Nobody was listening to him. Nobody was helping him. He was down. When he was down, his Lord reminded him, Oh Muhammad, if the whole community doesn't support you, I am always a Sami' and I am Basir. Yes? Because the end of the ayah says what? Innahu huwa Sami'ul Basir. Sami' means what? I'm the one who's listening. Listen. If someone else is not listening to you, the community doesn't listen. 
Qareeb. Ujibu da'wat al da'i. This is the Lord who's closer to you, Muhammad, than your juggler vein. The community is not listening to you. I'm listening to you. And you know how I'm listening to you? Firstly, in Surah Yasin, Allah tells him, Don't let their words grieve you. How many of you read this ayah? Don't let their words grieve you. Don't worry. Even Rasulullah had moments where he needed someone to say, Don't worry. Likewise, in our own communities, when you see someone going through hardship in family, don't pick up on it and use it to laugh at them or to make fun of them or to gossip about them. Come around them and say, Listen, I'm here for you if you need anything. Don't worry. If you see someone's business coming down, don't use it as a sign to start saying, look at them, that their business is down now. They used to be this and that. No, 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 no. Move on, move on. Come to the person. Like Allah came to his prophet and said to him, I am Samir. I'm all ears if you need help, if you need support. So when the mi'raj took place, some out of the opinion, that there was a number of journeys, not just one. Yes, some say mi'raj happened a number of times. Some of the ulama. Because one group say that the Mi'raj took place firstly in the second year of his prophethood, then a few years later, then a few years later, there are some ulama who believe in a number of journeys. Others who say no, that the main journey was after what? The 10th year after Hijrah, 11th year after Hijrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him then. Why? The first reason, to console him. Second, لِنُرِيَهُ min ayatina. So that we could show him some of our signs. Because Salah was introduced from Mi'raj. Understand this point please. Adhan came to us from who? Adhan that we pray. Adhan came to us from Mi'raj. Mm -hmm.